Elon Musk may be the visionary behind SpaceX's ambitious goals of reaching multiple planets, but shot well, age 60 is the steady hand behind the company's success. As president and COO, Shotwell oversees the day-to-day -day ops of the Hawthorne-based company, manages finances, customer negotiations, does HR, and relationships with government agencies. Fun times. In short, all the people-focused areas of the business that drive growth. She's a rare case at Elon's company, an executive, second-in-command, no more, no less, who's been there for over two decades. Moreover, she's got Elon's trust and ear. The partnership between a bold, attention-grabbing, unpredictable tech expert and an engineer-turned-businesswoman who's far less concerned with public attention has propelled SpaceX to the top of the aerospace industry. Gwynne Shotwell's achievements are becoming increasingly evident through the results that SpaceX has achieved. Whether it's the Falcon 9 project or the Starship initiative, this lady's always been able to get the potential future benefits these projects could bring to the company. With her exceptional negotiation skills, Gwen Shotwell has played a pivotal role in navigating the complexities of management processes. Her diplomacy has facilitated effective collaboration with agencies like NASA, the FAA, the FCC, and others since SpaceX's founding, leading to those lucrative contracts. Regarding the Starship project, Shotwell's diplomatic abilities have been crucial in securing the necessary launch permits from the FAA, a challenging task. Despite initial skepticism after early flights experienced failures such as mid-air explosions and unsuccessful stage separation, the successful completion of third and fourth flights have showcased SpaceX's ability to overcome regulatory hurdles and pursue its ambitious missions. Similarly, with incidents like the Falcon 9's upper stage failure in July and a recent unsuccessful booster landing, Shotwell's consistently been the first to take charge of reorganizing related efforts and accelerating investigations with the relevant teams. This has likely contributed to Falcon 9's quick and stable return to launches. Although Shotwell's contributions may not always attract public attention, her influence behind the scenes is undeniable. Currently, I've got no doubt that Gwyn is working hard to expedite the approval process for Starship's fifth flight. Given her track record and rep, it's very likely she's going to secure FAA approval in the coming days or weeks, further propelling SpaceX towards achieving its ambitious goals. On the business end, Gwyn skillfully navigates the financial landscape, crafting strategies to generate necessary revenue to bankroll these enormous projects like Starship. Despite Elon's ambitious goal of launching each Starship for just $2 million, achieving this remains a distant prospect. The total cost of the Starship system, though significantly lower than their counterparts like NASA's SLS, still represents a considerable investment estimated to cost around $5 billion. Moreover, the plan to colonize Mars requires numerous subsystems in preparations, each with its own cost. To address these financial demands, Shotwell and the SpaceX team introduced a transformative solution, Starlink. This renowned system serves as a critical revenue stream. Given the financial foundation needed to nurture these other ambitious products like the Starship until they can become profitable ventures on their own. Thanks to her business acumen and visionary leadership, Gwen Shotwell has played a key role in shaping SpaceX's trajectory towards success and sustainability in the field of space exploration. Indeed, Starlink has emerged as the cornerstone of SpaceX's revenue generation, a remarkable feat considering the inherent financial challenges faced by aerospace companies. Despite the significant costs involved in efforts like Starship and Mars colonization, Starlink's been pivotal in bolstering SpaceX's financial position. In just over three years since its deployment, Starlink enabled SpaceX to report its first profit in the first quarter of last year. And as the system continues to expand, its contributions will further bolster SpaceX's pursuit of the red dream, colonization of Mars. Beyond just revenue generation, Shotwell and Elon Musk envision Starship as a model of reusability, an unprecedented achievement in the aerospace industry. This revolutionary rocket embodies cost optimization principles, utilizing inexpensive materials like stainless steel and methane-fueled engines. These design choices not only cut costs, but also position Starship as a formidable competitor to other aerospace organizations. By pioneering innovative solutions and challenging conventional norms, Shotwell and Musk have propelled SpaceX to the forefront of space exploration, driving progress towards their bold vision of a sustainable, multi-planet future. Her statement in early last year encapsulates this audacity. Why can't we build a rocket every day? 
This ambitious goal epitomizes SpaceX's relentless pursuit of innovation and efficiency in the realm of rocket production. While the notion of constructing a rocket within a day may seem fantastical to lots of us, Shotwell's unwavering determination underscores SpaceX's commitment to pushing the boundaries of possibility. Achieving such a high frequency of rocket propulsion will be imperative if SpaceX intends to launch hundreds or even thousands of starships every year, facilitating humanity's journey towards Mars or the Moon within the next eight years. To realize Shotwell's ambitious goals, SpaceX continues to expand and upgrade its launch production and testing systems. In the near future, Starship is poised to emerge as the epicenter of rocket innovation and advancement, solidifying SpaceX's position as a trailblazer in the aerospace industry. Like Elon, Gwen Shotwell possesses a bold and ambitious vision for the future of space exploration. That's why, from the very beginning of her time at the company, Gwen overcame a major challenge that her peers in similar roles couldn't have withstood with the same resolve. Gwen Shotwell's first task was to sell SpaceX's first rocket, Falcon 1, to customers and secure the appropriate permissions to launch at Vandenberg Air Force Base, now Vandenberg Space Force Base, near Lompoc, and to test rocket engines in McGregor, Texas. While we were all working hard on engineering, Engineering, she was opening up all the doors that were viewed by commercial companies as being some of the most difficult doors to open, said Tim Buzza, former SpaceX VP and the company's fifth employee who stayed at the company for almost 12 years. All these things, just having a commercial company get into Vandenberg base for our first go-round there was really important, he said. It gave us some credibility even though we hadn't done anything yet. As Shotwell was piecing together the company's business strategy, she was also serving as the glue between Elon and the rest of the team. She helped structure the organization of the company down to what individual leaders were doing. She was the one who was keeping us all in the right mindset and moving forward together, Buza said. That would be important as Falcon 1 rocket development began to sputter. In March of 2006, the small rocket lifted off for the first time and cleared the launch pad at the Atoll and the Marshalls before falling back to Earth and crashing into a reef. The rocket was carrying a satellite built by cadets from the U.S. Air Force Academy. A second and then third launch attempt ended in a similar fashion. All the while, Shotwell was trying to sell customers on SpaceX's launch capabilities. In discussions with potential customers, Shotwell would highlight the positives. After all, the rocket had cleared the launch pad. Speaking to reporters after the first launch attempt, Shotwell described the failure as a setback but pledged, we're in this for the long haul. When these failures were happening, we would just as quickly as we could just find the problem, fix the problem, and get to another flight. But she was always having to deal with all this other stuff, which is with customers, the press, dealing with financial stuff, Buzza said. All of that, that's probably equally or more difficult than fixing the rocket. In 2008, the Falcon 1 rocket finally launched and reached orbit. Armed with that success, Elon and Shotwell went to meet with NASA officials to make their case for a contract to resupply the space station, according to Isaacson's book. It was then that Elon asked Shotwell to become president of the company, saying that NASA was concerned he had too much on his plate between SpaceX and his EVs, and he needed a partner, according to the book. SpaceX would go on to win a $1.6 billion contract from NASA to transport cargo to the space station, a deal that saved the company from ruin, followed by contracts to ferry astronauts. In March, the company took a step toward its goal of returning people to the moon, and someday carrying them to Mars, with a largely successful test flight of its massive Starship rocket. The partnership between SpaceX and NASA was not always easy. The space agency was used to engineering rockets and spacecraft itself, or at least being in charge of the process, and SpaceX often had its own way of doing things. This is where leadership really became obvious. She stepped into some pretty difficult discussions to help the team see each other's point of view and then to move forward, said Michael Suverdini, a NASA program manager for the space station from 2005 to 2015 and now chief executive of space flight company Axiom Space. So Gwen not only led her team, but she really helped evolve NASA's thinking in these kinds of engineering challenges associated with human spaceflight. And that's no small feat. After an uncrewed SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket blew up on a Florida launch pad in 2016, destroying a customer satellite, Shotwell allowed a satellite customer, SES, to embed a U.S. employee in SpaceX's failure review team to give the company a first-hand look at the problem and solution. That savvy business strategy worked. I don't know any other organization that would have allowed that, said Hallowell, the former SES executive. It was through that relationship, which I think was quite extraordinary, that we managed to get the confidence to continue to use SpaceX. Her time at SpaceX, however, has not been without controversy. In June, pieces of information were claiming that Shotwell allegedly retaliated against one of her employees after wrongly accusing the employee of having an affair with her husband. 
Shotwell did not respond to requests for comment on the allegation. In the article, which focused on Elon's behavior towards some female SpaceX workers, employees also criticized Shotwell for defending Musk and not taking harassment allegations seriously. But ultimately, these were just unfounded rumors. In a statement to the journal, Shotwell said that SpaceX fully investigates all harassment allegations and takes appropriate action. She also told the journal that Elon Musk was one of the best humans I know. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.